I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And today you need to know about Trump's speech to the United Nations last week on September 23rd. Now there's been lots of talk about the United Nations speech, about its tone, its deeply US-centred and anti-immigration themes. And well, of course, I'm not going to pretend to you that I don't have opinions about all that. But I want to talk about what struck me personally as a climate scientist, how what he says matches reality or doesn't, and maybe speculate a little bit about why he's saying it. So I'm not going to cover every single climate related clip because believe it or not, that would take forever. In this one hour speech, he talked about climate change a huge amount. But let's start with this particular statement. We're getting rid of the falsely named renewables. Okay, straight off the bat, getting annoyed here <laughs> watching this. So they're not falsely named renewables, they're called renewables because the energy source they use, the wind, the sun, uh, hydro as well, often categorized as a renewable, you know, those things don't disappear once we, we use them. Unlike fossil fuels, which once you dig them out the ground and burn them, they're no longer around. So they're called renewables for a reason. They're a joke. They don't work. They're too expensive. Now, this is something that I think a lot of people will hear and kind of think, yeah, renewables are really expensive and people don't really use them. And that's kind of ignoring the vast sea change in renewables that's taken place over the last decade or so. So for example, last year worldwide, renewables provided the world 40% of its electricity and made up the majority of new electricity installations. In 90% of cases, new renewable projects were cheaper than the fossil fuel alternatives would have been to build. So far from not working or being too expensive, we're seeing them working and be cheap enough that we're seeing them being built time and time and time again in preference of fossil fuels. The wind doesn't blow. Those big windmills are so pathetic and so bad, so expensive to operate. Most expensive energy ever conceived. Already we've established that in the vast majority of cases, renewables are cheaper than the fossil fuel alternatives. But here Trump's conjuring up this image of wind turbines with them being frail and pathetic. I think a lot of people don't know how badass wind has become. So the biggest wind turbine currently under construction will be bigger than the Eiffel Tower, but spinning around. And the latest wind technology, building them far out at sea where they float in the ocean, allow some wind turbines to produce electricity at around 50% or higher of their full capacity. So the idea that they're just kind of sitting around idly doing nothing or they these pathetic little things really doesn't match the, <laughs> the incredible reality of wind power. The energy, you're supposed to make money with energy, not lose money. You lose money, the governments have to subsidize. You can't put them out without massive subsidies. I'm so glad he mentioned subsidies because fossil fuels take absolutely vast amounts of subsidies. It's just we're so used to them, we barely even talk about it. The International Monetary Fund estimates that fossil fuels receive subsidies to the tune of seven trillion dollars per year. So if you think renewables are expensive, wait until you hear about fossil fuels. And speaking of subsidies, videos like this one aren't actually subsidized by anyone. I don't want to sell you all stuff you don't need, so I don't do product placements or even YouTube monetization. Videos like this are entirely supported by my incredible patrons who you can join up here. But if that's not for you, just a like, comment, and a subscribe go a long way to helping videos like this one reach new audiences. Okay, let's see what Trump has to say next. I'm already feeling a sense of dread each time I click play. And most of them are built in China, and I give China a lot of credit. They build them, but they have very few wind farms. So why is it that they build them and they send them all over the world, but they barely use them? So this is Trump using his both anti-renewable energy rhetoric and anti-China rhetoric, which he's conveniently rolled into one massive lie. The thing is though, China is using a vast amount of renewables. In fact, last year alone, they built 400 gigawatts of solar and wind power. For reference, a typical coal power plant is roughly one gigawatt. In fact, China built so much renewable power that even though their energy demand went up last year, their emissions started to fall, marking a mammoth shift 
in the world's largest emitter. Another UN official stated in 1989 that within a decade, entire nations could be wiped off the map by global warming. Not happening. So this is one of the things Trump says where I actually have to do some digging to work out whether he's actually referring to a real thing that was said and he's just distorting it or actually he's just making something up entirely. My best and most generous guess is that he's referring to this Associated Press report, which said, a senior UN environmental official says entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if the global warming trend is not reversed by the year 2000. Now that's not saying the nations are gonna be wiped off the face of the earth by the year 2000. It's saying that if we don't hit the brakes, by the year 2000, we're gonna end up smashing into the wall in front of us. And that is absolutely what we're seeing. Those nations are still not underwater, but we can see from how the sea levels are rising and are projected to continue rising and accelerating in that rise, that those nations very likely will end up being wiped off the map, which is a huge tragedy and not just something to completely distort for the sake of making political points at the United Nations. Years ago in the 1920s and the 1930s, they said global cooling will kill the world. Okay, straight off the bat, I think he's got the decade wrong. This is like a really classic climate skeptic myth, but it's normally about the 1970s. In fact, as early as 1912, there were news reports talking about global warming and the basics of the science around the greenhouse effect date back some 200 years at this point. Um, but I think actually he's talking about what was happening in the 1970s. Let's hear what he's saying a bit more. Then they said global warming will kill the world, but then it started getting cooler. So now they could just call it climate change because that way they can't miss. Uh, yeah, so he's definitely talking about this myth from the 1970s. In this myth, uh, the claim is that in the 1970s, all the scientists were banging on about global cooling. And there definitely was some research about that. And perhaps more importantly, there were some really big news reports on the topic. But even at the time in the 1970s, there was six times more research on global warming than there was on global cooling. Now, the second point that we've just flip-flopped about what we've called it, no, global warming and climate change are both terms we still use, I still use all the time today. Global warming refers to the warming of the globe overall. And meanwhile, climate change talks about all the consequences of that, how weather patterns are changing, how different parts of the world heat faster than others, etc., etc., etc. These predictions made by the United Nations and many others, often for bad reasons, were wrong. They were made by stupid people. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, deep breath. Okay, so first off, uh, these predictions by the United Nations, I guess he's talking about their Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports, which don't so much do their own predictions as gather together all the climate science that's out there to look at the state of art research on climate. And actually their predictions have been borne out time and time again. For example, when it comes to global warming, the amount of heating we've seen of the planet is roughly in line with what was predicted in the first IPCC reports. It's also interesting to note that it is in line with the predictions made by fossil fuel companies, whose in-house scientists predicted as early as the 1970s that burning fossil fuels would continue to heat the planet. But obviously, rather than come forward with this information, these fossil fossil fuel companies decided to hide it and fight anyone who actually talked about climate change. It's also not just when it comes to global average temperature that the IPCC has made accurate predictions. They've also accurately predicted the pattern of temperature change, the pattern of rainfall change, changes in extreme weather, changes in sea level rise. So time and time again, things that the IPCC said would happen someday are now happening today. And as for the claim that all these predictions were made by stupid people, I have nothing to say other than, I know you are, but what am I? And I'm telling you that if you don't get away from the green energy scam, your country is going to fail. Now, this is just blatantly untrue. We've already spoken about how renewables are much cheaper than fossil fuels in the vast majority of cases. And on top of that, many countries are heavily reliant on fossil fuel imports. And so they rely on countries to get hold of their energy supply. Shifting to green energy allows for a level of energy independence that otherwise for many countries would be impossible. On top of that, one study found that for the UK, a shift to net zero would be worth it 
even if the rest of the world didn't bother. Now, a part of that is the massive savings as a result of air pollution, but I'm going to talk about all that in just a second. At extreme cost and expense, Europe reduced its own carbon footprint, cost yourself a lot of jobs. Trump is always talking about jobs. He's the big job maker. But even if you look at the United States, green jobs massively outweigh fossil fuel jobs. So just last year, four fifths of new energy jobs were in the green sector. So if you care about jobs, then you should care about green energy. In the United States, we have still radicalized environmentalists and they want the factories to stop, everything should stop. So obviously I've hung out with a lot of environmentalists as a climate scientist, including some who would describe themselves as pretty radical. And I've never really heard anyone make this claim that we should just switch everything off overnight. What we want is an energy transition, a transition for our societies, for our economies, for our energy systems, so that we can keep functioning and thriving, but not destroying the planet, our home, our lives in the process. European electricity bills are now four to five times more expensive than those in China. Now, I live in Europe and I can confirm that our energy bills are pretty high. But a major reason for this is because we were heavily reliant on gas imports from Russia. And because of that whole Russia invading Ukraine thing, that supply has slowed to a trickle, meaning that Europe needs to get its gas supplies from elsewhere in order to keep the lights on. Now, far from renewables being a major part of this problem, they're seen as a major part of the solution, a way that Europe could free itself from having to import vast amounts of fossil fuels from other countries and potentially economically gain a huge amount. That's why in America I withdrew from the fake Paris Climate Accord, where, by the way, America was paying so much more than every country. This is a claim that Trump has made ad nauseam. And by ad nauseam, I mean every single time he makes it, I feel a little bit nauseous because it's just so far from reality. So the Paris Climate Agreement is weak. It's painfully weak. It basically lets all countries just say what they want to do to fight climate change. And then if they don't do what they say, the consequences don't exist. Now, as part of the Paris Climate Agreement, there is a mechanism for wealthier countries to support lower income countries in the energy transition and to deal with climate change related disasters. But there's not a set thing in place saying how much different countries should pay. And so far from being a major win, Trump leaving the Paris Climate Agreement is just a bit of an own goal, taking the US out of one of the main negotiating stages in the world. We have the most of any nation in the world. Clean, I call it clean, beautiful coal. You he certainly does call it clean, beautiful coal. And he has done for a really long time. And this might surprise you to hear, it's the opposite of the truth. When it comes to greenhouse gas emissions, coal is worse than any other major fuel source. And even if you don't care about climate change, which you really should, you should still care about coal. And that's because it pollutes our air, our water and our land. Now, air pollution is responsible worldwide for one in eight deaths. And around half of those deaths are down to burning fossil fuels, with coal being the dirtiest of the bunch. So we shouldn't really be calling it clean, beautiful coal. We should be calling it killer coal. In closing, I just want to repeat that immigration and the high cost of so-called green renewable energy is destroying a large part of the free world and a large part of our planet. I think this concluding thought is especially worth commenting on because it sums up the rest of the speech so well in that it turns everything on its head. Here he's talking about efforts to protect our planet, to protect ourselves from the changes that we're wreaking on the climate. And he talks about those efforts as destroying our planet. And honestly, it's so infuriating to hear this language being used. So for want of a better term, ask backwards. Now, there once would have been a time that I would have been overjoyed to see a US president fill his speech with talk about climate change. But not like this. Not like this. It's particularly ironic hearing Trump talk so much about climate change themes, given that Politico just reports that the energy department has added climate change, green, and decarbonisation to its growing list of words to avoid. So Trump gets to talk about all this, but the energy department 
the energy department doesn't. Look, there was a big part of me that didn't want to talk about all this, that wanted to make a lovely video about solar power and where to build it, and I'm still planning that video. But the truth is that these words matter. Taking to this world stage and polluting the atmosphere with misinformation and toxicity, well, it makes me wish there was a good metaphor for that. The thing is, Trump is saying all this because he's fighting against the tide. While it's not nearly fast enough, the world is transitioning to renewables. There was a time when the fight to keep the status quo alive didn't have to take center stage like this. But this is a pretty blatant attempt to reverse what progress there's been and protect fossil fuel interests at all costs. At our costs. And speaking of the cost to us, I mentioned one in eight people die from air pollution. That stat can be hard to get your head around, maybe even hard to believe. And so I made a whole video about it. Okay, until next time, bye.